Here's your brush, sir. It wasn't easy getting it back. The manager took the brush from me, gave me the toilet keys as my reward, and stomped off. What was all that about? Manager, he say, bah, look at state of this. Need much cleaning in detergent before go around my you bend. He said all that? Body language account for much, you know. Oh, yes, indeedy. Oops. The grease paint had worked magic. Now it looked like aged marble instead of cheap plaster. Hi there, Dwayne. Hi there, George. How can I help you, young fella? What do you think of this? Good gravy. Looks old. Yeah, I had to turn this town upside down. Boy. Your luck's better than ours. Looks Roman. I wouldn't know. What'll they say back home? How much do you want, George? Oh, I couldn't. It's the find of a lifetime. I mean... Fifty bucks. Take it or leave it. I'll take it. Here you go. And here you go. Thanks for the money, Dwayne. This'll come in real handy. I ought to be thanking you for finding this... Roman statuette. Okay, well, I'll see you around, Dwayne. Count on it, George. Hello again, Ultar. Praise be to Allah. I am blessed with your bountiful presence once more. About Bull's Head Hill. Are you desirous of seeing this most splendid place? Well, maybe. A terrific bargain. Only 50 of your Yankee bucks. 50, huh? Okay, it's a deal. Here's the cash. Ah, most splendid. As you say, the cash price moolah is correct. Mister, we make with haste. Where exactly is your taxi? Because the only vehicle I can see around here is an aging army surplus truck. Yes? Ah. Okay, I'll be along in a minute. 
It didn't seem right to take off with the toilet keys, so I left them on the bar. Hello again, Ultar. His most splendid and adventurous client. That's your taxi? Oh, yes. Most assuredly. Most entirely splendid taxi in all Marib. It looks like an old army truck to me. Bah! You Americans with your cheeky board caps and your Judd Hershes, you have lost sight of what a taxi should truly be. About four tons by the look of it. There. You have hit the nail in the nutshell. Okay already, let's go. Regrettably not, most esteemed fair. There is a minor problem of a tiny nature. The fan belt has taken it upon itself to break. So, what are you going to do? What can I do? I must wait for a ride to the garage for a replacement. How long is that going to take? One day, maybe six. I can't wait that long. We've got to get moving. But how, my friend? I'll think of something. Is this any use to you? My friend, the very thing, yes! Ultar took the towel from me, cut it in two lengthways, and gave me half back. With his half, he did the kind of fan belt replacement that's normally done with stockings. Now, if I knot the ends together, so... Serviceable, yes? Very serviceable indeed. Stockings might work on a Bentley, but on a truck, the coarse toweling did the job nicely. Come along, my friend. You want to see the bull's head? Yes! With a flourish, I tied the end of the towel to the stick with a textbook reef knot. I could see that crack would make a good anchor point. Well, that looked really safe, but I had no choice. I hadn't anticipated going mountaineering when I'd come to Syria. I didn't like the idea of putting my hand in there. But hey, what the heck. I was only risking mutilation. No blade took my hand off at the wrist and no scorpion stung me, for which I was very grateful. But there was something in there, a metal ring, as wide as my hand. I took a firm hold of the ring, I tried not to think of death traps, and pulled. Whoa there! Around the corner, I found the corpse. Oh my God. Klausner? Large as life and twice as dead. I'd hardly had time to accept the fact when I heard the door mechanism start up again. Oh man, no! 
The door had slammed shut, trapping me. I had a bad feeling about how Klausner had died. The pocket was empty. The smell of the corpse reminded me of something. Mmm. It was my favorite brie back in Paris. I searched the corpse. No portable phone, no demolition charges, no five-course meal. You'd think international conspirators would go around better equipped. Bullwhips might be handy for exploring ancient ruins, but they're no use when you're trapped in a cave. Klausner clearly fancied himself as a latter-day Indiana Jones. I've done more fun things in my life than searching a corpse, but as my life expectancy wasn't great, I figured I should try every new challenge that came my way. I cautiously flicked open the jacket. Hey, what's this? I'd found some kind of lens. A very old lens made from a very hard glass. That settled it. The knight on the manuscript had been holding a lens the whole time, not a crystal ball. I couldn't think of anything to do with the statue, apart from scaring small children with it. A stone head bearing three bearded faces. It was a strange image, but a powerful one, redolent with antiquity and ancient mysteries. I couldn't take the inscription with me. All I could do was stare at it and try to memorize it. In occidenta cita est, in ora mundi. Okay, that would have to do. The mount's opening. It must be Ultar. My God, if he comes in, we'll both be trapped. Ultar, don't come in. It's a trap. Stay where you are. You! Hello, Mr. Stobart. We meet in the most unusual places. Please, do not make any sudden moves. I have no desire to maim you. Did you say maim? I did. Dead men tell no tales, as you say. And I want to hear everything that you have to tell me. And what if I don't want to talk? Then I shall, most regrettably, have to kill you. Rest assured, however, that I am an excellent shot. You would not suffer. Oh, that's good. Uh, believe me, I'm really assured. It is rather dark in here. I think we should conduct our business outside. Why should I make myself an easier target? If I fire at you, Mr. Stobart, I shall hit you even in here. But... Unfortunately, my marksmanship will suffer. It could be the difference between hitting you in the leg or the groin. Boy, it sure is hot in here. No sudden moves, Mr. Stobart. Now then, where shall we start? How about being bosom buddies and you putting that gun away? Klausner, do you know where he is? Yep, he's dead. Just around the corner of the cave. You want to look? I'll take your word for it. How did he die? Starvation or dehydration by the look of it. He was caught in this trap you were shouting about? Yes, I suspected as much. The Templars were not ones to give away their secrets lightly. Was he carrying anything of importance? No, nothing. So, why is this location important? What did the Templars hide here if not an artifact? Well, there was something in Latin up on the wall. Latin? Do you remember it, Mr. Stobart? What did it say? In Accidenta Cita Est, in Ora Mundi. Ah, the words of Caesar. Yes, that makes sense. Well, I know that roughly it means to the west, to the edge of the world. But what the heck is that about? 
It tells me where the sword of the Fomet lies. Mr. Stobart, I am sure that you are just what you appear to be. A gifted amateur. Thanks, I think. But I can no longer tolerate your interference. There is far more at stake than you realize. So what are you going to do? I regret that we must end this here and now. Your only choice now is whether you die like a man or like a dog. Okay, you're the boss. I'll take my medicine. You are an honorable man, Mr. Stobart. A rare breed. I should like to shake your hand. Yeah. Well... What the heck? Luckily, the canopy on Ultar's truck broke my fall. Thank goodness for that. The worst part of the experience was Ultar's driving. What about the lens? Is it still in one piece? Oh, yeah. Well, it's good to see you again, George. Really? Well, I have to say, I'd have enjoyed Syria a lot more if you'd been there. I wouldn't have been much help. Anyway, you did just fine on your own. I'd better get back to the quest. <laughs>